Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. If you would like to ask a question to be answered on this channel, send your question to Ask Dave, all one word, at ARRL.org. Also, if you'd like to know what Augies are, YouTube said that every YouTuber should have a name for its followers. And so, for example, if you're doing films about beekeeping, you could call your followers the hive. Well, I call my followers Uggies. Now, if you're in uh, Wales, uh, it turns out that uh, an Augie is a Cornish pastry. But if you're not there, it means you're a subscriber to this channel. Our question comes to us from Scott, uh, who's... <laughs> Email is Scooter. So, Scooter. Unfortunately, he does not give his whole name. He says, I'll have my call by Friday, I hope. So I tried looking it up, and you can't look it up by email address, unfortunately, on QRZ. That'd be the only way to get to it. So we assume he got his call sign. Congratulations. This question is pretty old. And I've got some questions that are pretty old. Sorry about that. They go into this pile of ageless questions. I have a dipole for 2 meter homemade 146.52 is what it's cut for SWR 1.5. That's good. That's fine. It's a little hard to measure SWR on VHF because the cable between you and the antenna is, it can mask poorer matches because there's so much loss in the cable. Okay, it's cut for SWR of 1.5. The antenna analyzer will often give more than just the SWR. It'll give you the actual impedance that it sees. And in this case, he says, uh, the ohms are 74. How do I change it or do I need to? The simple answer to that question is, you don't need to, okay, because 1.5 is a fine SWR. Now, on VHF, you've got the problem that if you get your antenna really short, so it's only, say, a wavelength long, uh, your body is so close to the antenna that it's going to affect the performance of the antenna. So with VHF, we do the best we can. We get the antennas up in the air. And the thing that will help you the most is getting that antenna outside and up on your roof, okay? Like a J-pole, if you're just doing two meters, you can get J-poles that are uh, built for uh, two meters and 70 centimeters, but they get a bit complex. But a simple J-pole will do for two meters. Depends on where the activity is in your neighborhood. You may even want to look at putting up something for uh, the 222 band, the so-called 1.25 centimeter band, and have a lot of fun with that. Now, let me tell you, just so that you know, FM is vertically polarized. So your dipole should be in this direction, with the coax coming out this way. Okay, what a lot of people do is they get a simple little vertical from MFJ, or you can make one yourself if you can find, say, some welding rod or something like that. Get an SO239 in the center, 19 inches, okay, and then to the four holes, you attach rods, 19 inches each, okay, bend them down, sort of, and that will help increase the uh, impedance of the antenna from uh, around 30 ohms to around 50 ohms, okay? So the key thing with 2 meter and 70 centimeter propagation is to get yourself an outside antenna. Now, let me mention that I have an ICOM radio that I bought that um, I had connected to a J-pole on the roof. The cable came directly into my shack, connected to the little handheld, which was sitting there, and I picked up the handheld one day, and it wouldn't transmit. And the reason it wouldn't transmit is because the wind had created a voltage 
across the antenna, which came down the coax and blew out the front end of the radio. Not good. Fortunately, it was still under warranty, but what I should have done, the outside of the coax should have been connected to ground. And by ground, I mean a ground rod, okay? One of the easier ways to do that is to attach a wire to the bottom of the J-pole. If you've got that copper J-pole, run it all the way down to ground, to a ground rod connected there. Don't solder anything, use compression cables like hose clamps or purpose-built grounding hardware. Now there's a lot more to grounding than that, but that'll get you started and will protect the front ends of your radios. So it looks to me like you've been a ham about two years by, uh, by now. I hope you've upgraded to general and I hope you've had a lot of fun in ham radio. So, Mr. Scooter, good luck and persevere. Until we next meet, 73.